that one peered out into the cool, crisp morning. Today was a special day. She looked over to see her brother Kwai, already making his way out the door. She got up quietly so not to disturb her other siblings. When Dawan was outside, she bounded after Kwai, making their way to their special place. They sat together on the bridge like they always do, watching and feeling the nature that surrounds them. Dawan sang her made-up song while Kwai rocked back and forth. After the song had come to an end, they were both faced with today's highlight. The result of who won the scholarship will be announced today. Kwai has many dreams. He wanted to do a lot of things that will improve life in the village. But to do that, he will have to go to the city school to learn about a lot of things. Secretly, Dawan also hoped she will have the chance too, but she was afraid to voice her feelings. Today also marks the day the landlord's tax collector comes and claim payment for rent in the form of rice, sacks and sacks of rice. Dawan's family had to work hard to give a portion of their rice to the tax collector while still having enough to feed the family. Dawan and Kwai felt this was really not fair. At school, this became the highlight of the day. The teacher wrote three words on the blackboard, labor, need, and inheritance. He began to ask serious questions like, why do we pay rent to the landlord? How did he come to own the land they were farming? It made the students think and wonder. Before the class came to an end, the teacher had to make the all-important announcement. The teacher approached Dawan and asked what should a student do with scholarship and continuing school. Dawan was afraid, but she answered all the same and said that that student should learn what is useful for the village and return to change the system to a fairer one. Well, Dawan, you won the scholarship said the teacher. Dawan could not believe her ears. Dawan tried to look for her brother in the midst of the other students that have crowded around her. He had already left without even saying anything. Now, Dawan dreaded the thought of breaking the news to her father and fearing if he would allow her or not to continue her studies in the city. Dawan found her father mending the chicken coop. He was in a foul mood. The tax collector had taken their rice. Dawan felt a gripping fear in her heart. Father, she said in a small voice, I won the scholarship prize, the one that will allow me to go study in a city. Can I go, father? Dawan asked, her voice getting smaller. Her father stood and bellowed. What about Kwai? He won nothing? How can you take your brother's chance away from him? With that, he walked away to the rice fields. Dawan's grandmother had a different reaction, however. She was proud of Dawan. Dawan's mother, however, was erratic. Grandmother suggested they go visit Noi. Noi and her husband, Gan, had spent some time in the city. Perhaps they would be willing to talk to father. As they were preparing to leave, Dawan's mother suddenly came chasing after them. I will take Dawan to see Noi. You are getting too old to walk, mother. With a sweet smile, grandmother nodded and turned back for home. Noi's house was a wonder in itself. There were colorful postcards all stuck to the wall with images of the city. Dawan always stared at them with curious eyes. Dawan's mother told Noi in a gist the purpose of their visit. Noi exclaimed vehemently, Why would you want to go to the city alone? What can you hope to learn? There is nothing good in the city. The only reason why I went to the city was to work. I could earn more there than here in the village, but that was all to pay that unscrupulous army officer so he wouldn't make a gun enlist. 
The poor are made to work extra hard while the rich profit from our labor. Children are forced to do odd jobs just to make some pocket money. And healthy young women that venture into the city become engulfed in the dim dance houses offering whiskey to drunk soldiers. I'm sorry. I know you want me to talk to your father, but I truly think the city will do you more harm than good. But as Dawan was walking home from the conversation, all she could think about was that picture of a postcard with uniformed students swinging their book bags on their shoulders. I want to see for myself. The voice was small but firm. Back home, Kwai had been bitter about the whole situation. He actually came in second after Dawan in the exams. He lashed out at Dawan saying she was only a girl. What can she do to change since she can't argue, lead or even fight for the people? Dawan was angry. It had come to this. Either she or Kwai gets to go to the city. During dinner, Dawan tried to bring up the subject of her schooling again. Don't you have enough schooling already? Why do you want to keep studying? If only Kwai had won the scholarship, he could come back and help me. Oh, what's the use? Her father let his voice trail off. There was no more talk about schooling anymore. After dinner, Dawan was left to her thoughts. She began to think what this opportunity would mean for her. She may not even amount to anything. She might just end up being a wife and a mother. After all, she's just a girl. At the same time, she could not help but want to fight for her right. There was a noise to her left. A monk was washing himself by the river to where she was standing. This gave Dawan an idea. Dawan decided she would visit the temple to see the head monk and seek some advice. The marketplace was noisy and busy. She met a curious young girl, Bao, selling lotus flowers and birds in cages. Dawan was fascinated by this girl. Bao offered to give the flower to Dawan as a present. After all, she picked it from the river for free. She doesn't like to take money for it. Dawan made her way into the temple. Dawan tried her best to approach the head monk quietly amidst the approving stares from the other villagers. Dawan told the head monk she would meet him at the courtyard. When Dawan met the monk at the courtyard, she related to him her situation. But why do you want to go? The monk asked her. Everything you need to learn is right here. You need to learn to stop wanting things because they will not last forever. What is the sense of longing for temporary happiness? Dawan was surprised at his answer. The more she listened to him, the more frustrated she felt. Why fight pain and suffering when we all die in the end? Even if you manage to make a small change now, none of it will last, the monk continued. I just want my chance to try and make a difference, Dawan cried out, trying to hold back tears. You will be wasting your time and spirit, said the monk. Dawan could not take it anymore. She ran out from the temple, not wanting the monk to see her glistening cheeks. At the market was another commotion brewing. Vichai, Bao's brother, was beating Bao because she gave away flowers for free and she also freed the birds from cages without selling them. Bao was undeterred. She jeered at her bully brother and continued to free the birds. Vichai began raining down blows on Bao. Dawan could not bear it anymore. She rushed in to intervene. Right at that moment, she saw Kwai too. Rushing in from the opposite direction, Kwai held Vichai's hands while Dawan knelt down beside her friend who is holding a bird in her hand. Alas, unfortunately, the bird died in the midst of the scuffle. You, I know you, you are Kwai, Bao exclaimed. Oh, why offer me false help? Why be kind to me when you are mean to your own sister? Kwai was taken aback. 
Who's the one that's been trying to grab a chance to finish school? You're just another bully. Kwai got angry. He tried to hit Bao just like Vichai had done. Dawan grabbed his arm and tried to stop him, but he pushed her away roughly. Dawan fell on top of some broken bird cages and a piece of wood sliced through her ankle. Red blood oozed out from the wound. Kwai, Kwai, my own brother. Oh, for all you talk about helping people, you turn around and take my chance away. You're just a big bully after all. Dawan was exhausted. Noi had appeared in the market. She bandaged Dawan's wound with her scarf. The crowd dispersed. Somewhere in the distance, the growl of thunder can be heard. As she was nearing home, Kwai came after her. He apologized to Dawan. He had time to think about what she said in the market. It would not make sense to say he wanted to help fight unfairness if that meant taking away his sister's chance at school. He knows what he has to do now. They both went home to face their father. Father was angry because Kwai was giving up his spot for Dawan. Dawan was adamant. She found her courage and stood her ground. I want to try, father, she said with urgent sincerity. Father let out a heavy sigh. He placed his hand on Dawan's shoulder. Very well, daughter. You shall try, he said with a reluctant smile. She turned to look at Kwai, but Kwai had turned away, not wanting to show his tears. On the day Dawan was to leave home, she felt a knot in her stomach. She was nervous and afraid. Her grandmother sat her down for a leave-taking ceremony. Her grandmother gave her a lotus bud in a jar. This lotus bud is shut tight now, afraid of the world, but with sunshine and water, it will unfold. And so will you, Dawan. As Dawan sat inside the bus, she felt sad at the thought that Kwai did not come to send her off. She looked out the window as the bus was driving past the field with the bridge she and her brother said when they talked. She saw Kwai on the bridge from a distance, both arms thrown out, meant to embrace her and send her off. That one stood up and flung her arms out to window to do the same. She saw her brother wave until he became only a speck in the distance. That one sat back down. She peered at her lotus bud. Some of its petals have already begun to unfold.